Please remember to like, subscribe and comment as we love to hear back from our viewers. Also, if you enjoy our videos, please consider becoming a patron of our show through Patreon and or GoFundMe. Links are listed below the video in the description. From the deepest, darkest recesses of Dangerous Nerds headquarters, Keith Moncrief and Gary Cassell. Hey guys, another episode of Pop Culture Minefield with Keith and Gary. And we're here to talk about some really good stuff, nerdy nerd stuff. And uh, today we're going to be talking about... Well, uh, the word has kind of been floating through that uh, production is wrapped on Birds of Prey. I saw that she had posted a picture, or someone had posted a picture of uh, Robbie. Yeah, Margot and Robbie. she's looking cute as she I don't think she can take an ugly picture. I really don't think no, it's possible. Think possible. Yeah. But she's looking adorable as uh, Harley Quinn. Look, and... look, look, let me at least get into this one thing here. I don't mean to interrupt. No, interrupt but, uh, me. <laughs> let's, let's at least cover this one thing. Now, by now, there are those of you that have seen some of the pictures that got released over the last week from the set of the movie. And one of the pictures includes a picture of a certain... Uh, actor who is well known for playing a certain character that likes to work nights. Mm. Mm. Yes. I haven't seen this. Yes. Except he's not wearing the costume. He's just looking all Wayne. Wh what actor is this? Well, the same actor that's been... Ben Affleck? Yes. So he was on the set. He was on the set. All right, you guys. It said that he's done. <laughs> Now, now, here's the thing. He's not playing, I mean, again, he's not wearing the costume. costume. He's wearing, you know, nice Bruce clothes. Wayne clothes. Yeah. Basically, if he's playing another part in this movie, they certainly made him look like Bruce Wayne from all the previous films. Yeah, they, let's not pull an Arnold Schwarzenegger and Red Sonja here. <laughs> that would just be the... That was so stupid that it's they didn't move. make him come. It was just, say, just say it's a dick move. It's a dick move. There you go. A Dick Grayson move. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I have been wanting to really just get some confirmation here because that was part of a series of about four or five pictures that hit the web, and one of them is Ben Affleck, and it looks like he's just staring into this, uh, 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 it's either a building or a home that he's about to walk into, mm. and it was part of the set of all of that. So it wasn't like he was visiting. He was on set, made up, looked well, real nice. Birds of Prey, of course, if you know the history of it, is directly related to Bruce Wayne and Batman. Mm -hmm. So uh, it would only make sense that Batman would make another cameo appearance, or at least Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Wayne. Cause, and, cause he Because he's still telling the truth. He comes into this movie and he's just playing Bruce Wayne. He's not Batman. Yep. So there you go. That'd be cool. I did not see that. You need to send that to me. Or yes. I need to go look it I'll up. make sure you get do the it. labor myself and go Google it. <laughs> go, 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 Google it. Just 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 Google uh, birds of prey pictures, and it would have been from either last week or the week before. Sweet. I'm I'm gonna do that. You do it too, but not right now. Watch the show. Yes. Sell it, people. <laughs> so anyway, uh, with birds of prey wrapping, we've got uh, oh Orville, uh, a yeah. new episode just aired, and to my delight. Marina Sirtis was the uh, school teacher in it. And uh, everybody knows her as Deanna Troy from Star Trek Next Generation. And yeah, she's just, I've met her. Uh, in fact, the first time I met her, she was co guesting with uh, uh, Majel Barrett. Mm -hmm. And it was just wonderful meeting the two of them. And of course, them complimenting my artwork it just made me all squeaky mm -hmm. inside. I was a little boy. Squeak. And she's so gorgeous in life, and, and I love her accent. And, of course, in this, she uses her natural English accent as the school teacher. Yeah. She's Bordas's son's uh, school teacher. And, of course, there are problems with Bordas in school. Uh, if I had had a teacher like that. <laughs> I had a couple of teachers like that. <laughs> Anybody from high school, um, well, from my school back in Fredericksburg will know when I say the name Mrs. Rash. <laughs> was a foxy lady. <laughs> so, and, and it was a really good episode. 
Uh, Orville is just nailing it every episode. Even the, the worst episode, which was Bored is Addicted to Porn, uh, because they took what should have been the A story and made it the C story and made the C story the A story, which was his addiction to porn, which was just dumb. Okay. It had some great funny moments. It was very cringy. Yeah. Uh, and I like that humor. And it was just like, come on, man. Get the story that we want. We didn't get enough of, which yeah. was the 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 people on that that planet that's about to be destroyed, mm -hmm. and we didn't get that emotional connection to them. That when they, you know, they have to make a great personal sacrifice, that they have to select sixty of them to survive. Everybody else dies, and it's like, how do you make a selection like that? Oh, that gets put back to the C story. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, it was that series just knocking out of the park as compared to Discovery, which is. I would like to say hit and miss, but it's more like miss, 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 hit, miss, hit, hit, miss, 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 hit, miss. And uh, the first season, it was like five of the episodes were, were were pretty good. I wouldn't say they were great. They were pretty good. The rest was just crap. And then this season started off weak, but it was nice seeing Anson Mount and we get that growth going. And, and, and look, look, CBS, do yourself a favor. Just Star give, series. With, just give Anson Mount the opportunity to have his own Star Trek series as Pike with the Enterprise. Exactly. And and, and just make sure you put Peck on there as Spock. And he's really nailing it. I thought he was good. People keep calling him emo Spock. I'm like, he's not emo Spock. Why do you why he is not emo Spock? And Re Rebecca Ramjan as number one. Put the three of them on there and make us Happy. Yes, give us five years of Star Trek before Kirk. Now, I will point out something. There is a change.org campaign going around. Yes. My buddy Eric Brones signed it. When I saw he signed it, I signed it. And then a bunch of my comic uh, pro buddies, they went and signed it when they saw it on my page. And I get a notification when anybody goes and signs it. Go check it out. It's If you're friends of mine on Facebook... Uh, you'll find it on my page, a link to it. And if you're not a friend of his, why aren't you? What the heck's wrong with you? I'm a friendly guy. I like people. I'm so, the one that hates people. Yeah, so he's, he's just ugly as I, sin on the inside. I, I, I know. This, Beautiful on the outside. Ugly as sin on the inside. working on it. You know. <laughs> so, all right, moving on to the next awesome thing, which just, uh, I just watched it last night, and I know you watched it too. Yeah. Game of Thrones. Season 8, Episode 1. It, it, you know what? It, it is rare that you get good TV. And we have had good TV with this show. And I gotta say, first episode, final season, it's as good as anything they've ever put out. It There's, was like a little movie. Oh. And of course, that's what they're doing this season. Yeah. Each episode is like a movie. And it really feels that way. And uh, it's just, they really, really know what they're doing. It feels like they're just finally really in their strike. Because there was a couple of seasons back where they were going for one character per episode. And it's like, that's a horrible way to, to, to play out a season. Because yeah. people want to see, they consistent, consist, consistently want to see their favorite characters. Mm -hmm. And then they have to wait two to three episodes before they see them again. That's not how you tell episodic television. Yeah, it's hard. So finally they got in the stride and started telling a bunch of stories of characters each episode. That way you got a better flow. And, uh, and of course, during this episode, you're sitting there wondering, and I'm not going to give anything away, where's Jamie? Because he's one of my favorite characters. Where is he? And um, there's a great payoff at the end. The last seconds of the episode. Yeah, it great. is. Great. It was one of the best endings of any episode. This entire episode was really an episode for those people that have been fans since the very beginning. It starts out with a callback to how the pilot began. In fact, if you've seen the pilot, this episode pretty much has callbacks to that pilot. Yep. Uh, from the beginning and the end. So <laughs> no, it's, it's good stuff. Now, I don't recall seeing Brianna in it. No, she's not. But but it, I know she's coming back. Yeah, because yeah, just so much that happens in this episode, and we'd like to tell you more, but but we don't want to spoil it for you because some of you people you should are be watching. so slow to you watch. Should it. Be You're watching. so slow watching. Why are you so slow watching these episodes? Why do you take forever? 
Go watch the episode. It's one hour out of your life. One hour. Get the app. Go just the app. watch it. And stop ruining things for people going, but that's pilot for me. We'll watch the episode. I get it when it's like three days after an episode. I get that. But when it gets to be a week after an episode, you're putting on other people your problems. So if they spoil it for you after a week, that's on you. Go watch the episode. <laughs> that rant brought to you by HBO. And a dad. I'm a dad. <laughs> That's how I talk to my kid. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Game of Thrones is going to be fantastic this season. It's uh, it's going to be heartbreaking watching the fun finale. Yeah. Because we're only, this is it. This is the final season, right? This is the final The final. Oh. Now, <sighs> the prequel series will be later this fall. And that should be interesting. I don't know if it's going to be great, but I am looking forward to these guys going off to make their Star Wars film. Yes. Now, I know Bob Benioff Iger... And Weiss. Well, Bob Iger says uh, Star Wars is going to hiatus. No, not really. The movies are. The movies semi-are. Yes. Because these two are, gonna, are planning their next movie. Yes. Don't think for a second that all production has stopped. Yeah. They're just not lensing. Yeah. Which means yes. filming. What they're doing is going into pre-production mode, and then they're probably going to take about a year to plan everything out, and in about another year, within two years, we'll yeah. start seeing announcements again for the next Star Wars movie. But there's more Star Wars coming out this fall, <laughs> but you got to have Disney Plus to see the Mandal Mandalorian. Yeah, their, their focus is primarily TV. to market the uh, Disney Plus. Yeah. And this is very shrewd, very smart business. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same thing DCU is doing. Uh, I love DCU. Even though they still don't have much original content on it yet, it's worth it to me. Now, as, as a side thing, since you did bring that up, May is the month. Because May is when Swamp Thing drops on DCU. So if you're one of those people like me that have been holding off to invest into that service... I, I've been holding off waiting for Swamp Thing. So now it's Swamp Thing, Young Justice. Season oh my three. God. You you should have. I know you would enjoy Doom Patrol. Oh yeah. No, 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 no. Now I can watch all of it. All okay. the episodes all right. are there. All the episodes of Titans, Doom Patrol, and, and all the episodes of Young Justice. And so really. Oh my God. Yeah. You got me onto Young Justice. Yeah. That is a really good show. I keep telling people. It's look, really good. It, it, if you enjoyed. Justice League or Justice League Unlimited, this is even better than that from the jump. This is the kind of television series that I wish everybody, everyone else that does superhero, superhero stuff or comic book stuff in animation would follow this model of storytelling because it, it literally is just, it's gratifying. It's all it good. is. Uh, I was very pleased with it, and and you know, and going back to close on Game of Thrones. Yes, um, this is going to be a straight up uh, um, season. Yeah, but I did want to point out that each episode is a different time, which is interesting, because like the first episode was uh, almost an hour. Yeah, it's like fifty nine minutes. The next episode, I think, is a, an hour and nineteen minutes. No, 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 they're not going straight up hour until episode three, I think. Oh, okay. So, so. This uh, this last episode was fifty nine, then 50, another fifty nine, and then that's when they start getting into. Then they start going into the longer hour and a half, almost longer. an hour and a half, and it's. Brrr, I'm excited. So basically, get your popcorn, get all your regular food, and if you can't watch it Sunday, DVR it, and then get in front of that TV the next night. Don't go beyond three days. Don't make us have to do this again. But I, I would tell people who do DVR. Uh, I think it's important to leave your TV on, on the networks for the shows that you want to support, yeah. because the ratings don't count DVR, and that sucks. Nielsen should count DVR. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they 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 allow for you to they they allow for that first three day period. After three days, if you DVR, that doesn't count either. When they try to go back through and recalculate. See, I don't like that. It's like. That Nielsen has to change its ways. This is the 21st century, man. This isn't the 1950s anymore when they first started. Yeah. Let's get your stuff squared away, Nielsen. All right. Now, we're going to go on to another Star Trek album is uh, Jonathan Frakes, because big news dropped today that it is official. He is going to be uh, on, on Picard. He's not appearing. He's directing. Okay. He is directing 
episodes three and four. He's doing the second block of uh, Picard. Now, if he makes an appearance on there, that would be even better. Mm -hmm. But from what I read today is that he's going to be uh, directing it. So that tells me at least one thing. No matter how much that series might or might not suck, those episodes will not. Yeah. Because Jonathan Frakes is a great director. Yeah. Uh, he knows Star Trek better than anybody. And he knows how to get that feel of Star Trek. And he does it over on Orville. And he did it on Discovery. His episodes were the best ones on, on uh, Discovery. They came the closest to feeling like Star Trek, in my opinion. Yeah. It's so humble, my opinion. <laughs> and with that, we go to uh, Justice League. Yeah, uh, just a little bits of information that have, that have floated out. It's really two different stories that have come out, but basically you can just put them together. What is now, more information has been released about Zack Snyder's Justice League. And basically what had happened was, uh, if you remember the scene where they were talking about uh, Steppenwolf's original first invasion of Earth, right. which allowed all of the gods and all of the armies of man and everyone to gather together to fight off Steppenwolf and to repel his attack. Well, seems like Zack Snyder uh, actually had it in his original version of the script to have Darkseid there too. And not only was this something that was written, he casted for it and actually had someone ready to go to act, at, well, basically act it out. Well, this he had someone as Dark Side and a different actor as yeah, Ste Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf. And to have because Steppenwolf them. originally was supposed to also be in um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. He was supposed to be the main bad guy. Yeah. And so uh, both of them would appear, and I think they uh, actually did film something. Now, the actor that was playing Steppenwolf. The physical version of Steppenwolf said that they had actually filmed something. So, all of that has been done. Hmm. And it creates a, uh, well, just one more reason why, what the F, Warner Brothers, really? Seriously? I mean... They have <laughs> one of the worst reputations of a studio that likes to micromanage their film directors. Yeah. And, uh, now don't get me wrong... Uh, in the past, it's it's worked sometimes because like uh, Zanuck and Brown uh, oversaw Spielberg directing Jaws. Yes, they sat behind him every day, every shot, and they wanted their job was to primarily to make sure that this upstart didn't stray from the script, that he shot it exactly the way they wanted it shot. But Zanuck and Brown were great visual. Producers. They weren't just producers. They weren't executives. They weren't just shirts at Warner Brothers. They knew the business and they knew filmmaking. That's a big difference than what we've got today. These guys that don't know shit about filmmaking. Yeah. Just micromanaging these directors and yeah. not letting them do their jobs. And it's not just Warner Brothers. It's part of the reason why Fox basically had to be sold. Because it was filled with a lot of people doing just that. And this is one of the dangers for other studios. Uh, Paramount, as I keep saying, is in trouble right now financially. Uh, they cannot afford to finance a lot of their movies because really money is the real problem why they haven't been able to make another Star Trek movie with the new cast. Yep. It has nothing to do with anything other than money. It's money. They don't have enough of it. And they don't have enough of it to be able to afford to finance all of the movies that they want to put out there. So really, money's the problem. And when you have money problems, you're not really running much well, of a studio. It's, it's, it's the problem that's, that's plagued Hollywood for years. Sam Peckinpah got fired from the shooting of a Western one time mm -hmm. because he was coming in. Or it wasn't Sam Peckinpah. I, I apologize. It was Roger Corman. Yeah. Roger Corman got fired off of a Western that he kept shooting, being frugal, thinking the studio would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But studios have this stupid mindset, whatever problem they have, just throw money at it. And they don't understand why they get these inflated budgets and why it's harder and harder to turn a profit. And, and then, of course, they do, they do the micromanaging on top of that, and they ruin the film. Ruin it. Ruin it, Brian. Ruin Again, you've got Deadpool made for $67 million, 
and then you come back after Deadpool has come out and made all this money, and you're still planning on making an X-Men movie starring a character, Gambit, who you decided we're just going to drop $150 million large in making this. They shouldn't make a film for more than, <laughs> really, $50 million. Uh, if the actor wants so much money that they then get another actor, yeah. because really this is character-driven storylines. Uh, the uh, X-Men are character and plot driven. Gambit for $150 million. That's a stupid budget. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Again, I love Gambit as a character, but I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. You shouldn't be spending more money on a Gambit film than you would on a John Wick movie. Because really that's, if you're playing... It's the it, same genre. It is. It, it, Gambit really is. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same thing. That's really what it is. It's Gambit is an assassin. It's like, what in the hell in Gambit would cost that much? <laughs> if it's a Gambit-centric story, what? Cards? <laughs> really? Yeah, I could just see that guy sitting there with the script, building his budget. Uh, yeah. Oh, throws cards here. That's uh, another two million. Throws another card here. That'll probably be another two million. Warner Brothers. Is that? And that was Fox. But that's, oh, Fox, why, I'm sorry. that's the reason why you had to get sold. It's it's decisions like that. Yeah, <laughs> I tell you, man. Disney owns you now. Disney is uh, becoming the monopoly. All you uh, fans that are giving Disney studios. a hard time because they bought Fox need to understand it's that kind of financial mismanagement that allowed them to be bought by Disney. It wasn't like Disney came in and just took them over. No, yeah, it was not a hostile takeover. <laughs> It was, uh, to, you know, Fox standing there with their pockets out, empty, going, we don't know what to do. I, I went to college. I went to city college. <laughs> Love you, Fox. Really, we do. I do. I, I've been a fan of Fox since I was a kid. That Fox fanfare always got me excited as a kid, Batman. And uh, But they have screwed the pooch so many times over the... And that's, by the way... Uh, uh, a military slash uh, Air Force slang. Screw the pooch. Uh, if you've ever seen the movie The Right Stuff, you know what I'm talking about. So, anyway. All of those problems, though, should now officially be a thing of the past now that you're part of the Disney family. Yep. And, uh, and of course, last time we talked about uh, Fox and, and uh, The Simpsons, mm -hmm. which we've not heard anything new on that. If... Disney's talked to them yet. They really do need the time. It's the single biggest animated show on Fox. Hey, they'll be exclusive to Disney Plus, though. And you wonder what's going to happen to Family Guy. You know? Because th this is basically the equivalent of R-rated TV. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. But uh, maybe it'll end up over at TBS with like American Dad. Mm. Which is terrible now. It's not funny anymore. It's sad. So, with that, uh, we talked about Zach, and I guess that's it. Yep. So, uh, I guess until next episode, this is Keith. And this is Gary. And this is Pop Culture Mind Field. Blowing your mind. See you next time. Y'all come back now. Chuck Dixon speaking to you from the Control Tower. It was a real kick to return to a series that uh, I wrote 30 years ago. But even more fun is returning to an interrupted storyline that I was writing 30 years ago. 
longtime Airboy fans can finally find out what happened next. Join us, support us, and keep them flying over and out.